In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to governmental accounting, going through those questions, and then practicing test taking skills with them. First question, which is a characteristic of a debt service fund? Either A, part of government-wide activities, B, governmental fund, C, fiduciary fund, or D, proprietary fund. Let's go through this again using the process of elimination. Which is a characteristic of a debt service fund? So the debt service fund, is it part of the government-wide activities or is it in these groupings? These are basically the groupings of funds that we have, the governmental fund, the fiduciary funds, or the proprietary fund. So the debt service fund, where does it lie? Well, clearly it's a fund and you really want to think about these two things kind of separately as almost two sides uh, of, of the ledger in, in essence. We have the government-wide activities, reporting activity as a whole for the entity as a whole, and then we have basically the funds. So if we're talking about a debt service fund, it's not part of the government-wide activities necessarily. It's, it's something, it's going to be one of the fund groupings. So it's not going to be A. The three fund type groups that we have, these are the overarching groups, which the funds then will fall into. Debt service fund being a name of a particular fund. Is it part of the governmental funds, the fiduciary funds? or uh, proprietary type funds. Now the largest group of funds is gonna be the governmental funds. They're on the modified accrual basis, debt service fund falls within it. So we're gonna say that's gonna be B is where the debt service fund falls. The fiduciary fund are like trust type funds, funds and, and that have a fiduciary responsibility. They're far less common than the governmental funds and the proprietary funds. We typically have two types of funds that fall into the proprietary funds if the uh, fund acts more like a business type of entity. So final answer B, which is the characteristic of a debt service fund, B, governmental fund. Next question, journal entry related to the payment of bond interest and principal in the debt service fund will include either A, debit bonds payable, B, debit interfund transfer out, C, debit to expenditures, bond interest, or D, debit to interest expense let's go through this again using the process of elimination a journal entry related to the payment of bond interest and principal in the debt service fund will include so we we're, we're have a bond we're paying off the interest and principal of uh, the bond what would that look like you want to think about this in terms of two areas that could be affected one government-wide type of activities on the accrual basis it'll be recorded normal accounting or normal accrual accounting, what we would kind of expect to happen. And that would be us paying off, you know, debiting interest expense and, and reducing the principal and crediting cash. And then we have the fund side of things. On the fund side of things, which we are clearly in now because we're in the debt service fund. So we're talking about the debt service fund. It's going to be a governmental type fund, the largest group of funds, governmental type funds on a modified accrual basis therefore not having long-term liability. It's very strange because we're in the debt service funds. You would think it would have a long-term liability on the books, but no, it, it doesn't because that's on the government-wide activities. It's recording kind of the flows of what's happening in more temporary type of accounts. So knowing that, going through this, we're going to say, all right, is it going to be A, the debit bonds payable? No, because we're in the debt service fund. There is no bonds payable. It's long-term. We're in modified accrual short-term. B, debit interfund transfer out now that's something that could be on uh the fund accounts so we'll keep that for now c says debit expenditures bond interest again something that could be on the the modified accrual basis wouldn't be on the accrual basis so i'll keep that for now d says debit to interest expense that would sound kind of reasonable if we were on the accrual basis but we're not we're on modified accrual basis in which we don't have expenses but expenditures so we're not going to say D. So it's going to be between B and C. Journal entry related to the payment of bond interest and principal in the debt service fund will include, we're going to say it's uh, C, debit to expenditure. It's going to be bond interest. So that's going to be one items that we're going to have. Again, we're not going to have any liability reducing here. And if we're talking about the payment of the principal, it would still be debit to an expenditure, which seems kind of odd, but then for the bond principal. So final answer is going to be C. Next question, which account would not be closed to the debt service fund? Either A, estimated revenues, B, revenues, C, fund balance, D, expenditures, bond principal. Let's go through this again using the process of elimination. 
which account would not be closed in the debt service fund. So we're thinking about closing entries. We're thinking about those entries at the end of the time period in a for-profit organization. You're imagining the income statement accounts, everything below equity, temporary accounts closing out to what would be equity like retained earning or capital type of account. So similar type of process. When we think about uh, the governmental accounting, we want to think about where are we here? Are we in the government-wide activities, fund activities, accrual method, modified accrual method? Well, we're not in the government-wide activities. We're in a fund here. So we're in the debt service fund. It's one of the largest categories of funds, the governmental or the largest category, governmental funds. They're on a modified accrual basis. So keeping that in mind, we're thinking about temporary accounts, modified accrual basis, using the term like expenditures rather than expenses. And they're going to close out, out there. So which, which ones would close out? First, we have estimated revenues. So when we hear estimated revenues, that's something that wouldn't be on the on the government wide activity on the accrual basis, it would be on the modified accrual basis. So it would be there. And you would think it close out, you know, at the end of the time period. So so both the budgetary accounts, and the normal kind of similar to income statement accounts would typically close out. So you would think that that would close out revenues. Now, in the modified accrual basis, although we call expenditures something funny, expenses something funny, expenditures, revenue is still called revenue. So we still have revenue under the modified accrual basis fund accounting. So that would close out. It's a temporary like income statement type of account. Fund balance. I'll keep that one for now because that, that's what you would think you would close out in two. That's kind of like the retained earnings account or the capital account. That's where the closing process would go, not the thing that would close, you would think. And then D says the expenditures uh, bond principal. Now, expenditures is going to be the, the modified accrual name for expenses, temporary account, something that you would expect to close. So I don't think it would be that. Then final answer being uh, C, fund balance that being like retained earnings that being the thing that doesn't close but is closed too so final answer which account would not be closed in the debt service fund c fund balance